How do you enjoy authentic, tasty Asian cuisine while staying healthy, especially if you're pre-diabetic? David, is there a way to do it? Somebody's asking on the internet. Oh, this is trending right now. All things surrounding fitness, nutrition, they're just like very, very relevant in 2023 right now. There was a viral post on Asian American Reddit saying, how do you guys keep your cultural food while dealing with pre-diabetes or diabetes? This person goes on to say they're 31 years old, they're Chinese, lately they've had to eat Western style foods because they're now pre-diabetic. Avocados, apples, chicken breast, chicken thighs, salmon, almond butter, green beans, asparagus, but they really miss eating white rice on a daily basis, Andrew. They miss the bulldog spicy chicken ramen, they miss noodles, they love noodle soups, mm. they, they can't get their parents to you know adopt anything other than white rice. Oh. And basically they're saying, how do you guys do it? I feel so limited and kept away from my, you know, Chinese foods that I love due to my situation. Right, right. I mean, a lot of people feel like eating healthy foods in America, at least, kind of can stray you away from the Asian restaurants and part of your culture. So we're going to try to talk about this as people who have gone out to eat at a ton of Asian restaurants Probably in our life. 10,000. <clears throat> yeah, especially like Chinese food. Had it all, okay, the unhealthy to the healthy food. Um, we're going to try to talk about it and, like, see if this can help. You know, I don't have all the end-all, be-all solutions. These are just suggestions, everybody. So please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. You know, I feel bad. Uh, you know, I, I could see where they're coming from. I feel like Chinese food in general gets a bad rap for being unhealthy. Yeah. Not because the Chinese cuisine is unhealthy, but probably what is available on the street and what, you know, Chinese people who are trying to survive and just make money have decided that people want is generally sometimes not as healthy. Would you agree? Like, in terms of the cuisine is not unhealthy, but what people serve in America to represent the cuisine is oftentimes more on the unhealthy side. I would generally say home-cooked Chinese food definitely is on the healthier side, but restaurant Chinese food, especially stir fries and all the tasty quick stuff. You mean basically that, the stuff that is punching yeah. incredibly above its weight and a taste per dollar no, ratio distribution. The stuff that is very common, like everything from Chinese American food, which is General Tso's, orange chicken, uh, egg rolls. All right, now to your more, uh, uh, you know, even soup dumplings have a lot of fat. You have all your- Right, because the oils or whatever they're using, yeah. the amount of salt, sugar, all sodium, your, et cetera, et cetera. Sichuan so food, stir, uh, stir fried in the, in the hot oil, red oils. Yes, not that healthy. But there is a lot of healthy Chinese food, but that's more home cooked style and a lot of steam dishes. Those are not the most popular dishes. Yeah, so, yeah, I would agree with that. Do you think it is ultimately true that, yeah, a healthy style, it does come with some sacrifices. As people who ate whatever they wanted, like six times a day for X amount of years, you can't eat 100% of your most dopamine receptor touching foods all the time as much as you want in whatever volume you want. Yeah, I will say this. In America, living here and eating what's available here, it does feel like when you try to eat healthy, you are going to end up eating more Western food, like a sweet greens type stuff. You're going to eat more salads, more digs. You're going to eat more sweet potatoes, more chicken breasts. Or you're going to have to be trying to be hella selective at the Whole Foods open yeah. raw bar. Yeah, it's or not necessarily going to be like always soy sauce, braised, five spice, marinated chicken. I mean, which actually isn't that bad for you. So maybe you should figure out how to do that. But I mean, there are a lot of uh, 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 Chinese dishes, but yeah, it does feel like you eat more American food. So you do kind of lose a little bit of your culture sometimes, but obviously there's kind of hacks now. And there's so many, David, uh, diabetic friendly Chinese recipe books, right? Keto foods, whether yeah. they're pre-prepared or you prepare yourself keto yeah. cookbooks, right? Yeah. There's still ways to get your Asian flavors in, but yes, it will be tough to go to the restaurant and get your favorite stir fry without the oil. truth is, man, I think th this is a commentary on American culture and just sort of like abundant food sources in 2023, right? Mm. Like you can come to America, only eat Asian food and still become pre-diabetic or diabetic if you like wow out. Yeah, because because the portions are huge and a lot of the food here is not home style. Right. It's made with a lot of it's, oil. It's high glycemic. Yes. It's it's it could make you insulin resistant, right? I mean, it's restaurant food. It's made to make you feel good. Right. <laughs> Um, but actually, there are a ton of, like we said, keto cookbooks, diabetic, Chinese diabetic cookbooks. And you know what it is? I just got to stress that in America, guys, it's a land of abundance, but you have your own free will to make your own choices. And if you look at these home-cooked meals from Italy 
or the meals that they serve in like Milan public schools. Uh -huh. And then you contrast that with Italian American food. Ooh. Look at the difference. Oh no, very different. So Italian American food is, yeah, it's not as good for you as, as actual Italian food is. Yeah. Right, right, right. But you know the dishes that are not popular in Chinese American cooking, Andrew? Bok choy, watercress, gailan, eggplants, mushrooms, tofus, konjac noodles, konjac rice, cauliflower rice, instead of obviously wheat noodles or rice-based noodles. Um, stir fries, but using different oils. Right. Using less oil. Right. Using, like you said, the poached braised steam technique. The, the takeouts, they don't serve that style. No, Maybe I the takeouts do in Asia, but not over here, and right? it's tough because if you like Chinese food, most of the time when you're thinking of Chinese food, you're not thinking of steamed chicken. Even though I love the steamed chicken dishes, I would order that. But a lot of people are thinking, oh, I want those super juicy, fatty soup dumplings. Oh, I got to get the twice-cooked mala Sichuan pork with... Wait, we're wrong, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or like, oh yeah, let me get yeah, the red braised pork belly. You know what I mean? yolk. Yeah, ho, and it's like, roll, right? Yeah. That that's what you're thinking about when you think of Chinese food when you go out to eat. Yeah. Right, true. right. And those are actually like imperial dishes that were meant to be like eaten very seldomly <laughs> back in the day, too. But obviously protein sources have been ultra stabilized and cheap and you know, they're so like commercialized farming right, now. Right, right. And you can even make guotia with vegetable wrappings if you really want to keep it more like Keto or low mm. carb. Dude, some of these recipes look really good, man, and they still look like really Chinese. Yeah. How much do you think it is? It is true. It's about the representation. It's not about the total cuisine with a thousand dishes, but it's about what gets represented. But I will say in a macro sense, I do think that Japanese and Vietnamese cuisine, and then maybe Thai and then Korean, and it, as much as it pains me to say this, and I'm, not, I'm just saying this on a median level, I might put Chinese coming in five out of five on those five cuisines, though. What, in terms as of far as healthy. median health per dish. But it doesn't mean that there's not a ton of healthy dishes that this poster is, like, ignoring. Again, yes, the most popular Chinese dishes that people want to name, that the average person can name, probably are not the most healthiest. But really, for what cuisine it is, you know, minus sushi, sushi's healthy in a different way. Um, yeah, no, and, and listen, man, I, I feel like that there's a lot of hacks people can still do to get their rice fix in, to get their Asian flavors like, in. You can still buy chi Chinese flavor marinades at the store and marinate your chicken yourself. Low, right, put, low sodium, low yeah, calorie. Yeah, put it in the right. air fryer yourself. I mean, you know what I mean. And you know the crazy thing is, uh, this is a, a quick thought that I'll end with before we get into the comments section, is like, it's kind of messed up, but it's almost like, and, and don't take this the wrong way, guys, but if everybody ate, like a diabetic, probably, and I'm not saying different people don't have predispositions or they're born into it, but like less people would become diabetic if they already ate like a diabetic before they were one. Right. Listen, guys, like I said, I'm not saying for sure. I'm just and, saying, I'm just throwing it out there. And again, hey, it's a lot of portion control too, man. A lot of people in America, they feel like, oh, like, dude, of course you can eat a soup dumpling. Of course you can eat a piece of fried chicken. Just you can't eat all of it. All the time. Right, right, right. Um, basically, this person was saying that there are so many little tricks and tips and hacks here. Andrew, you can use different seasonings. You can mix your rice to be one-third white rice, one-third cauliflower rice, one-third quinoa or brown rice, and that's going to still ultimately, like, give you that taste vibe of white rice. Right, right, right. I like that. I like that one. Um, Andrew, what about lean proteins like fish and chicken, right? Obviously, lean beef particularly, you can just cook those meats with Asian seasonings on them in an air fryer or like a Instant Pot or something like that. And even though it's not 10 out of 10 like a restaurant Chinese dish, it doesn't mean that's not a Chinese dish. Yeah, exactly. And it, I mean, it could still appeal within like sort of the taste palette. Um, Andrew, a lot of people were saying, you know what? You got to just lean into the egg dishes. Fan chia chow dan. Ah, tomato egg. Yeah. Right, right, right. But there's a way to do it. Obviously, it matters the oils that you pick. It right. matters there's all the There's a lot of steamed egg dishes. What about tofu dishes? Lots of great tofu dishes. Um, a lot of people were talking about how can you make your parents understand? Because this guy, this original poster was like, when I go visit my parents, all they do is like shame me for not eating the white rice and like things like that. Is it true that the older parents, it really depends on how educated they are or how tapped in they are to like, you know, westernized health medicine, Andrew. 
how often are they going to get on board? I, I with think it? it's different because listen, if they're generally healthy or feel like they're healthy, living a long time with maybe just like mildly high cholesterol, which is like fairly common. I guess like at the end of the day, they're going to look at what they grew up eating and what they're eating at home as passable. But what happens a lot of the time is that the American kids like us, we grow up here, we're mixing it in with western size portions, we're eating out a lot at the restaurants, right. we're not we're, cooking we're, food as much. We're not walking enough. We're not walking enough, we're not running enough, we're not doing enough cardio. We're eating a lot of carb like we just think like, "Oh yeah, my parent I'm I'm eating rice and fish, but you're eating like a portion like 30% larger than what they eat in Asia." And plus maybe, they, maybe maybe three hundred percent larger. And plus they walk around more, and it's maybe a hotter climate, especially in like southern China. So I'm just saying, there's a lot of things different, guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, Andrew, the, here are some charts about eating low glycemic foods, basically that are not going to rise your blood sugar as much. You know, mm. your glucose levels, your insulin levels. Um, yeah, obviously, like we said, you can only eat Asian American food nowadays, or I'm sorry, Asian food. But because of what's available out on the street, you could become insulin resistant or pre-diabetic, even just eating your own culture's food in 2023. Exactly. And I think that that's the key here. Um, people were just saying, you know, portion size, Andrew. Uh, like we said, here are some uh, substitutes, Andrew. Instead of rice, use cauliflower rice or black fortune rice. Mm, I like black fortune rice. It's good. For bread, there's keto bread, oopsie, egg bread, Ezekiel bread. Mm, some keto bread is still really good. For pasta, Andrew, there's chickpea pasta, red lentil pastas, pastas that are made out of more vegetable-based things, right? Protein-based things. In instead of starchy potatoes, Andrew, substitute it for a, still a carb, but a complex carb like sweet potatoes. Ooh. Because, uh, yeah, Andrew, also, there is a ton of stuff if you are willing to pay, Andrew, there's a lot of pre-made keto options in 2023, or you can make your mm. own. They got keto Monto buns. Right, right. You know, I would say to this OP, though, I get wanting to still feel Asian and eat Asian food, you know? Because it's part of your identity, and right? you don't want to hope. Maybe, maybe this person doesn't speak Chinese very well. Maybe they're not around a lot of Chinese people, so they feel very distant from the culture. So they're just like, man, me eating the food or going to the restaurant is what makes me feel culturally Asian. So it's kind of like part of me. First of all, one, you have to enjoy the feeling of being healthy. But two, like, just don't eat it as much, I guess. Right, and when you do eat it, eat a smaller portion. Yeah, right? and then save the other part of it, and then you can eat it again the next day. So you, now you're you're splitting up a meal into two. Right, go out with more people, split it about amongst yeah. more people. Yeah, hang out with friends, split the check so it's cheaper. Also, intermittent fast, so you eat less food in general, so when you do eat food, you can kind of eat more of the tasty right. food. Right, go for a 30-minute walk after you eat so it lowers your glucose levels, right? It prevents your blood sugar from spiking as much. Exactly. This last comment said, I just refrain from eating foods that negatively impact my health. Any culture that harms you is not worth preserving. Whoa. Somebody said, I just go to Whole Foods and eat that. You can always make up a new cultural food, a healthier version with different sauces and spices. Yeah, that is true. But I'm also saying, you know, again, every culture has its unhealthy food and its healthy food. But people, when they look at Chinese food, they focus on the unhealthy food because that tends to be the most commercially viable. Right, right, right. And uh, if you actually go to Asia, you will see that there are different chains. Like in uh, Shanghai, Guangdong area, and there's a ton of chain restaurants that never made it over the U.S. that only serve steamed foods. David, one of your favorite dishes of all time is a dish that is very hard to find out here, which is Huang Menji, which it probably has a lot of sodium. But as far as fat, it's just braised chicken thigh in a pot right. with veggies. Right, right, right. And I guess the... Part where you got to be careful is the the rice scoop of rice they yeah, often yeah maybe you the it, sodium but, but essentially but you could you could cut that out and you can get konjac noodles actually at the Huang Manji you like, just like braised chicken that's just, that's your favorite dish right 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 I mean ultimately I think guys you can still eat what you want from your culture but you just got to eat it way less often a smaller portion and just be cognizant of where you're getting it right mm. but a lot of times we might be more watchful if you're an Eastern person when you're eating like uh, fast food because it's so clear what it is. It's Western, right? Right, right, But then right. you turn off that awareness radar when you eat 
motherland origin food. Yeah, that's true. Trust me, Asian food and Chinese food, it, to me, is still overall healthier than whatever you consider American food. Yeah, what do you think about that argument that they were saying, oh my gosh, all the healthy foods nowadays is, are Western foods? Yeah, right now in the West, yeah, but there's also- Because we're living in the West, right? It's like yeah, a, a lot of that harvest time, like dig in, sweet greens food, it's more- There's yeah, actually okay. a lot of braised vegetables too. It is true that the cold salads, you're only gonna get that from Southeast Asia, like Vietnam and uh, like Thailand. Right, right, right. And also, there are a lot of low-key Asian sauces. If you look at the totality of Asian things, like yuzu, ponzu sauces mm. that, you know, higher in sodium, but, like, low in calories, low in sugar, possibly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, ultimately, man, you know, it, it really is. You, you just got to walk, too. You got to get some walking in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just get some I, ultra boost, get the little iPhone dude, hand grip, I, you know? I feel the pain of this OP, man, but, like, you got to figure it out, man. Like, dude, it, like, I, I just feel like when you're like, basically like, oh, I miss the junk food. And I'm like, I mean, come no, on. You're talking about would, the fried Chinese donut, the yo tiao. That's like, would you say that this dough. OP is not increasing their knowledge base to make it, to yeah, figure it out? Yeah, just look it up. Look it up. And then, yeah, you got to start cooking at home. Plus, you'll probably save money too. Yeah, trust me. As people who, uh, as somebody who ate out like six times or even eight times in a day, I, it is true that- you know, all the sodium, sugar, fat, oils, carbs, it will catch up with you eventually. Guys, as much as I love to eat food, and I love my smala sauce too, which is our chili oil. You can buy it now, smalasauce.com. I would still recommend you guys intermittent fast. Cut one meal out so that you can maybe eat slightly more enjoyable meals later on in the day. Right. But just you got to eat less food. Yeah, I mean, also, I think that if you really want to, even though it's not as healthy, you can coat your proteins that you cook in your air fryer in soy and sesame oil. Five you know spice. I mean? It's going to make it taste Asian. Boom, five it spice. Garlic, whatever you want. What? Uh, what are some? Gochujang, the, the little... The Garlic miso Brussels sprouts. Yes, the Brussels sprout is Western, but the flavoring is Asian. It's still going to fit within, you know, that sweet, savory Asian tongue palate. All right, everybody, um, we're going to wrap it up right there, but let us know in the comments down below what your suggestions are on eating healthy, authentic, still good tasting Asian food. Yeah, because I know that watching, you know, uh, becoming insulin resistant or watching for uh, pre-diabetic traits or diabetic traits, it is a thing in the Asian community, especially amongst the older crowd. Do not blame your pre-diabetics just on the food, though. That's false, especially if you're eating primarily Asian food. You're either eating the wrong Asian dishes or there's another aspect of your lifestyle you're not, like, kind of, you know, working on. Listen, guys, it's 2023. We got, like, the old days we used to go eat the carbs and then go to the farm all day and, like, do work all this agriculture. Society's just different nowadays. We're that's, why, that's why old Asians like to walk around so much is because they just ate. That's why they're always walking around. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button. Uh, check out Smala Sauce. If you do like finishing oil and that fits in your diet, then it's really, really tasty. Let us know your other tips and tricks in the comment section below. Until next time, we're going to hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.